Welcome back, my warrior family. I pray this message this week finds you blessed. I pray you all are well. I uh, just want to always reiterate, if anybody has any prayer requests, please reach out to us and let us know. God is just so good. He has been so good to us. Uh, we got word last week that uh, Pastor Mark Lee and his wife Amber Lee, uh, their two daughters, uh, they were saved last weekend. We got another testimony uh, from a friend of the family that they had taken the next step in the process of getting to know God better uh, through baptism. And it's just, it's been a week of just feeling thankful. And there is something, tonight's message, looking inward, is something that has been impressed on me a lot lately. And not just for a message, but something that's been impressed on me personally. And that's what we want to talk about tonight, looking inward. But before we get started, I would uh, ask that you please bow your head and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you know better. We thank you that you love us enough to show us who we truly are, to help us understand, not just you, but ourselves. Father, I pray tonight in this space of time, let the words from this message help someone. Father, I know you have helped me tremendously and I am so thankful for what you teach me, the things that I now know and I continue to learn through your guidance and through your love. All this we ask in Jesus' name, amen. Tonight's message, look inward. The one thing uh, that kept coming to my mind in this, this season uh, that, that has been on my mind a lot lately is know thyself. I've had several conversations with close brothers and, and uh, different pastors over the term because it has been, like I said, it's been something very prevalent in my life for quite some time now. This term's been used for, for thousands of years from the inscription on the Delphi Temple, Socrates, uh, different self-help books, uh, lectures. It's been used a lot. That does not remove the gravity of it, though. There's a reason that it has been used a lot. Know thyself. Understand who you are. I would dare say that there's no greater tool that we can have than to truly understand ourselves. I'm talking about a raw personal look at you looking in the mirror and seeing yourself for who you truly are. But I, I don't want to look at this from any of the, the worldly standpoint. I want to look at this through a biblical standpoint, through a standpoint of what God can do to help you understand who you are, to look inward, to know yourself. Self-examination is an important part of living an authentic Christian life. But the reality of it is by nature, we would prefer to live through self-deception. Deceiving ourselves is far more comfortable and easy to do. We want to believe ourselves to be better, to be smarter, to be more ethical than honestly we are. That's why careful, spirit-directed, God-directed self-examination keeps us honest with ourselves and it keeps us honest with God. We need self-examination to combat the spiritual deception that is going on all over this world. All you have to do is flip through the channels and you can see real quick, the world has got a completely different understanding of what good is. And it's because of the self, the deception in self-examination, they've, they've come to understand that good is evil and evil is good. And we read in the Bible where the, those days are here. They're, they're on us right now. And that's what's happening. 
self-examination, an honest self-examination with the help of God is not happening in this world. Scripture tells us to confess our sins to God, which requires a certain amount of self-examination. If we can never find any sin to confess, we decide or we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If you look at 1 John chapter 1 and verse 8, if we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living the truth. It is dangerous to lie to yourself. The world wants you to lie to yourself. When I say the world, the enemy. It's dangerous to lie to yourselves. In 2 Corinthians 13, 5, it instructs, instructs us to examine ourselves and see if we are truly in the faith in Christ. 2 Corinthians 13, 5, examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. We need to test ourselves. We need to ask the hard questions. We need to address the true nature of ourselves, who we are and why we do the things that we do and stop lying to ourselves and say, well, you know, I know I did this, but that's not as bad as what some other people do. Stop the comparison. Look at yourself because one of Satan's favorite traps is to whisper false assurance to a heart that does not want to change. Without spirit-directed self-examination, our enemy's lie is too pleasant, it's believable, and it's easy for us to swallow, and it does not challenge us to go further, to be better. It lets us be okay with whatever we're doing. And don't we see that a lot in the world? Do whatever you want. It's your life. It's okay. That's not biblical. That's not what the Bible teaches us. In Psalms 139 and 23, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. The psalmist is asking God. He is actively asking God, Search me, know who I am. Know my thoughts. Understand the things that are going through my mind. Help me to be better. Because when you know who you truly are and you acknowledge your sinful ways, it allows us to go to God with specifics on what we see as false within ourselves. And I'm not preaching this message so that you will just look in the mirror and get down on yourself. That's not what this is about. What this is about is to acknowledge the ways in your life that you need to get rid of, the things that you need to step away from, to understand who you truly are, to understand that you know some things and to understand you don't know some things, to understand that you need God, that you want God. So, Real quickly, I just, I want to look at some scripture that has, again, with know thyself and being in a season of looking inward to, because if I back up and I go through the last three years of the health issues and everything that's gone on in my life, it has put me in a serious position of self-examination, reflection, and recognizing things about myself that before I just didn't want to address. A lot of memories that are in my past, I didn't want to process. God is helping me do that. God is leading me into a season of self-awareness and understanding who I am and helping me process a lot of things that have gone on in my life. Because let's face it, we don't want to look at trauma in our life. We don't want to look at ourselves in the mirror and admit that we have things that we need help with. It's easier to look at the world and go, well, I'm not that bad. That's not the life that 
Jesus has called us to live. And that's not the life he wants you to have. He wants you to be set free of all of that. And until we address it, we can't be. I have come to discover that I am a master at compartmentalization. And that that can work to a degree until that shelf falls over on you. So I want us to look tonight at Psalms, the 23rd Psalms. It's a very well-known scripture, but I want to look at it with a slightly different perspective. Again, this is very familiar scripture to a lot of people, but uh, I, I pray that this helps somebody tonight. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now, while thousands of messages have been preached through time with this scripture, time has neither diluted nor diminished the fact that God's word is alive and just as powerful as it's ever been. The scripture can paint a beautiful picture of a, well, it can paint a beautiful picture of Jesus. That is, he is our good shepherd. He is our loving father. And he allows us to enjoy the serenity of peaceful seasons in our life. Now that's true. That's absolutely true. And there, like I said, there's been so many messages that have been preached along those lines with this scripture, but I wanna look at something a little bit different tonight. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Jesus loves you. He cares for you and he's more than willing to give us an amazing life and will help us discover it. He loves us. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Now this one here has really um, hit home with me and uh, the perspective that I have seen it in lately has caused me a lot of time alone with God. He maketh me. Now I know for some of you, it may not be difficult, but for some people in this world, and I'm speaking of myself personally, we live at 110%. I mean, RPMs are pegged out and it's just go, 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 go for years. All I have ever done is work insane amount of hours and problem solve. And it's just from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. And while in that, in the midst of that, God has revealed himself in so many ways, it has never been more apparent to me that sometimes he maketh us to lie down in green pastures. He makes you sit still because without those still moments, those places of solitude. And one thing I, I this last week in, in message, brother Jacob at church uh, talked about the difference between isolation and solitude isolation is not of god solitude is with god when you get into a place of solitude it allows you to have a space where you can find that quiet time that you need to not only understand god but to understand yourself because let's face it it's in those quiet times that sometimes those thoughts of either trauma in our life or things that we need to address, they come up. You start thinking on those. Now, if you dwell on those things too long in the light of negativity, the enemy will also spin that to try to throw up your past and things that you've done that you've been forgiven for. But that's not what I'm speaking toward. I'm speaking toward things that are embedded in you Things that you do that you know you need to get out of you. Things that you need to stop doing. Things that you need to get rid of in your life. Things that you need to confess. And it's in those quiet times that they come up. Why do you think that is? 
Sometimes, yes, it can be the enemy, but sometimes God makes us to lie down in green pastures in those quiet places so that he can sit with us and speak with us and reveal to us the things that we need to get out of our lives. Whether it be habits, whether it be people, whether it be thoughts, what, whatever it is, he will reveal them. If you go back to 139.23, search me, O God, know my heart, try me and know my thoughts. Try me. Search me, God. Look inward. I know it can be a scary thing. And while we're on this subject, guys, don't ever be afraid to reach out for help. And when I mean help, I'm talking about mental health help. If you can find a Christian based mental health expert that can walk you through some of this stuff, there's nothing wrong with asking for help. Guys especially have a hard time with this. I personally have a very hard time with this. I don't want to ask anybody for help. I even have found myself guilty of not wanting to ask God for help because I feel like I'd bother him. He's got more important things to do. And I've talked to a lot of people about this lately and I know I'm not alone on this, but it's in that period. It's been th this time that I've had in the quietness, the solitude with God that sometimes has bordered on isolation. And I've, I have recognized that. And when we preached last week about community, that's part of what I have become to understand is it was a fine line between the solitude and the isolation. Be careful with that. Solitude lets you talk to God. Isolation removes you from him and can give the enemy a chance to get in your head. And that's not what we want. He maketh you to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. You ever walked up to a body of water, a lake, a pond on a, on a beautiful day, not a breeze in the air and water be completely still. When you look at the water, when you look in the water, what would be a way you would describe it? A mirror? I think about this scripture in this light. He gives me that quiet time with him. And in the stillness of that water, I'm able to see myself. I can see myself for who I truly am. And when we as an individual take the time to truly process self-examination, it can change our world. Now, sometimes I know this is a lot easier said than done, and this is not something that's just to be taken lightly. I am in the middle of this and it's been three years since all of the medical stuff started. And then a lot of the things that God has revealed to me, but I'm still in the process of this and it is taking me to a much deeper spiritual connection with God. And it's helping me understand who I am, who I am to God and what God has in store for me. The purification process of gold is not a fast one. It takes heat, it takes time. Sifting over and over through the gold to remove impurities. We are God's precious gem and he wants to purify us so that we can have a full, happy life. And sometimes it's not easy, but when you truly love somebody, you're willing to tell them the hard stuff but you'll be there with him through it. Jesus loves us. 
He is willing to point out the hard stuff in our life because he wants to set you free of it. Let him. Don't lie to yourself. That's what the enemy wants you to do. Be complacent. Push forward through self-awareness. Understanding who you are. Know thyself. He is our good shepherd. He puts us in places sometimes that we are forced to sit in the quiet so that we can better understand him and us. When we see those still waters and we see our reflection, guys, it's a such a, a beautiful image. I mean, if you want to change, if you really want to change the world around you, start with the reflection in the mirror. Start with yourself. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. The restoration process can be sometimes lengthy and tedious. When I was thinking about this message and when I've thought about this in the past, when I see restoration, I, my mind immediately goes to old cars. Now, can you imagine the time, if you got to look at a full history of the restoration of an antique car that had been sitting, exposed to the world for decades in a field, the rust, the replacement of parts, just the time and effort that it takes to bring what was once a neglected car to a masterpiece, a beautiful masterpiece. And you look at that and you're like, that's, oh my goodness, that's so worth it. How much more worthy are you? Maybe you've been out in the weather. Maybe, maybe you've been exposed to the world for decades. And the restoration process needs to happen. I'm not gonna tell you that it may be easy. I'm not gonna tell you that it may be short. I'm not going to tell you that it may be long. I don't know. The important point of this message is that it needs to happen. So that Jesus can lift those burdens from you. He tells us, don't lean on to our own understanding. Lean on him. For his yoke is easy and his burden is light. He loves us. He'll never leave. He'll never forsake. There's so many things in the scripture that tells us about how much he loves us. But sometimes for us to become a better version, a restored version of ourself, Jesus has to deal with some of the harder things. And he helps us understand them. Guys, I hope this message has blessed you. I hope that Maybe it will just cause you to stop and reflect for just a moment. But no matter what stage it takes you to, I pray that you let God have his work in your life so that you can be freed from some of the things that have burdened you down. So that the enemy cannot use these in a way that brings you to your knees. Instead, you can rejoice because you realize that where sin may have abound, grace abound more. Grace has been applied to your life. Find someone you can talk to. Whether it be a mental health professional, or it be a pastor, or it be a friend. Find somebody that you can connect with and you can talk to. If you don't know the Lord tonight, I remember what it was like to be bound in my sin without forgiveness. Don't stay there. God wants to forgive you. He wants to give you a gift, the gift of life, life eternal. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just pray that if there be one out there that doesn't know you, I pray that the Holy Spirit moves in them right now, that they would feel the need to come to know you through forgiveness because of what Jesus did on the cross. Father, I pray tonight if there's anyone 
that hears this message that needs to go through a season of restoration to be in that solitude with you, to look in the mirror and ask the hard questions, to face the things in our lives that we need to rid ourselves of to become what you truly want us to be. I pray that you help them find the strength. Father, I pray you help me to always look in the mirror first. Father, help me always to be ready to listen. I pray tonight for anybody out there that's hurting through the circumstances of life, no matter what it may be. Father, I pray peace for them because that's what you want for us. Forgive us wherever we failed you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Guys, again, thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, I pray that this message, again, has helped somebody. I know it helps me, and I'm going to continue to, to listen, to examine, to look inward, so that I can become what God truly wants me to be. We love y'all. We're praying for you. Again, if you need anything, let us know. God bless you. Lord willing, we'll see you next time.